Hello there! When you see this portrait with the shallow depth of field and a nice soft out of focus background, do you see a composite or do you see a wide aperture lens portrait taken at nighttime in a typical urban environment? Please let me know in the comments down below. Well, I know the title of my video might be a spoiler, but still let me know how you first saw it. Yes, of course it's a composite and made with a totally random image with no fitting in perspective, color or angle. My only criteria for choosing this background image was the nice warm range of colors. Let me show you how it's done. We have this close-up from a small cafe and we have this studio portrait shot on a black background. I don't think the black background has the right vibe, so changing the black to something with some more atmosphere could definitely make the image a lot more appealing. So let's mask out all the black. It's hard to tell where the boundaries of his shirt are, so we start by adding a temporary levels adjustment layer and brighten up the image. When quick selection tool is active, we have the option to click select subject. So let's do that. And it seems like Adobe Sensei, that's Adobe's artificial intelligence, has done a pretty good job. So out with our temporary levels layer and add a mask. We press V for move tool and drag the image with the mask to what will be our new background. Close this and let's turn off the visibility of the portrait for now so we can concentrate on the background blur. We start by making a copy of the background layer, command J, and convert that new layer to a smart object. Then we go to filter, blur gallery, field blur, and here we have different blur tools. Let's start with a 200 pixel blur to put everything out of focus. And the real magic happens when we play around with light bokeh to simulate how a wide aperture lens renders color and light. The bokeh color enhances the colors of the bokeh and if we dial down the light range, the light will be less intense. We press OK to see how it looks. It's fine, but I think we need a little more blur. Luckily, we turned our background into a smart object and it's easy to make small corrections because we work non-destructively. We go for a 300 pixel blur and a little work on the color and range too. Time to match the colors. If we make a copy of our smart object, command J, and rasterize the smart object, we can give it an average blur to even out all the colors. We drag this layer to the top and clip it to the portrait layer by pressing Alt or Option between the layers. Then we go for soft light blending mode and a little down in opacity. This gives us a starting point in the color correction and if we want to keep the blue in his eyes, we can mask out our adjustment in the eye region. Next step is a photo filter. Let's choose a warm yellow orange. Clip it to only affect the portrait and invert the mask to black with command I and paint with white in the mask to add a warm tint to the sides of his face. We need a little burning too. I do that with a curves layer and target where to adjust with a little hand. A sample from the chin, a little darker, and clip it. Again, we start with a black mask, command I, and paint with white. We can dial down the opacity for the brush for fine tuning the burning, and slowly work around to sculpt the face. From now on, we only need minor adjustments. For instance, if we want some complementary color contrast, we could keep some of the more cool tint in the shirt and hat. To do that, 
we paint with black in the mask to remove some of our previous adjustments. A little higher opacity. Yes, now it's easier to see some results. And another curves layer to adjust colors individually. Clip it. Let's expand the palette. We go to green and lift the curve a little and the red a little down, a black mask and some dabbing on the highlights. Is the skin still a little too bright and too red? Well, let's fix it with a green photo filter where we don't tick preserved luminosity. I think we are more or less done. Well, the point of this tutorial, besides showing the fantastic bouquet tool, was to show only our creativity decides when a photo is suited for being used as a background. Thank you and goodbye.